There you are, it's Capricorn. Welcome to your Capricorn July 2021 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James for those of you who are stopping by for the first time and for the subscribers, much love and affection to you as always. I always love to see you, it gives me and I send you a lot of good energy during the month, which you may well feel, I would suggest. Now look, um, this card, uh, this deck rather, I got this from a, um, directly from uh, the artist, it's all hand painted um, in, um, I was trying to think where she was, I can't remember her name sadly, and I can't even remember um, the, uh, I she might have been in San Francisco, I think. And anyway, earlier on today, I was doing a reading for one of my private clients and it just works fantastic. It really, really, really good. And of course, if you'd like a private reading, just check out the info in the description. Now, let me uh, see what there is in store for you. Now we're going to draw five cards because five is all we need. Don't you think that? We've, um, we've done that before and it always seems to, be just enough. There's a seven of staves. Staves. Yeah. And the queen of staves. Seven of staves, queen of staves. Is this a, not, I know it's not a stave with a stick. There's the priest. The priest. Um, because uh, the cards I was drawing for this uh, person earlier today, the prince of staves. Do you got some, um, lots of staves going on here. What's from in the middle here? Lots of fire energy. And here is the Fool. Gee, looks like the only card that doesn't have any color on it. And what a fantastic, fantastic card that is for you, Capricorn, of all the times of the year to be getting it. Now is the right time. Anyway, I won't give anything away just now. Rather, as is our usual practice, my friend, why don't you just come down, sit down next to me. We'll have a good close look at the cards together while I do the reading for you. There now, can you see? What a very interesting uh, set of cards. This card here, I'm going to deal with that second. Uh, it has this priest against it and the two court cards mitigating against it. And so is this full card. By the way, as I mentioned, if you do want to have a personal clairvoyant reading with me, just check out the information below. But in particular, have a look at the website because I think there's information in that website which you will find very interesting. Now I'm going to look at this Fool card here because this does not have any colour to it and I want to try and think why that might be the case. Well it doesn't have any category either although it's a major arcana card and it has no number attached to it. It's like a pane of glass through which you can see the archetypes of the other major arcana cards. The fool is an empty vessel who has had yet no experiences or thoughts of its own. It has committed no actions or reactions and possesses no sense of identity. Do you know, in a, in a way, the fool actually represents you in spirit before you left the Garden of Eden and came down into matter where childbirth is painful and where it's difficult you know, till the soil with the sweat of your brow and what have you. That's what that Garden of Eden story is about. It's about the descent of your spirit into the matter of this realm. Now balanced precariously on the very tip of a mountain the fool is on the cusp of interaction with the world and therefore the seeds of self-awareness. From the tip of the highest mountain, any small movement will launch the fool immediately into motion, won't it? It will tumble downwards, encountering all of the richness of the human experience that doesn't exist in the Garden of Eden waiting. This experience is waiting below for the fool in the world below. Now beyond the jagged surface of the earth, as though the mountain has just 
Newly risen lies a vast black sea, featureless and void. Celestial bodies fill the sky, planets and stars and asteroids and eggs and singularities. Fascinating, fascinating. Now those things cluster in orbits as though the fool was the beginning and center of the world. Now, no eyebrows on the fool, blank like a baby face of the fool. There sits a tentative smile, oblivious and open and ignorantly fearless. The fool knows nothing, thinks nothing, feels nothing, has no opinion or ego of its own. This approach, I suppose, this starting point is the only way you might approach the deeper mysteries of the universe. The Black Sea beyond the mountainous landscape is the mysterious frontier. The fool does not know enough to be afraid and will be its first explorer. Now, based on the first insights of that card there, I think what we can say is that this is a period during which you'll have a degree, well, I think a large degree of openness and trust and be ready to take a risk. You'll have the courage to stand your ground. Freedom, independence, creativity, they are going to be important to you. This is a time of great potential for you and the possibility to take a quantum leap in relation to some activity or problem that you're working on. And you'll be listening to your heart's voice. In particular, you'll be in the present. This is also a time of new beginnings, I think. And not so much a leap of faith, but perhaps a leap of fate. And the actions that you take, they won't have any malice associated with them at all. The fool is the one who walks without fear. The spirit of the ether is what I call it. Actually, it is genderless. There is neither male nor female in the fool, or alternatively, there is both male and female in the fool. There's the start of something new or spontaneous going on here, the beginning of a journey into the unknown, which is full of potential for you. There is, as I say, the, the need to take a leap, not of faith, but of fate, with the inner confidence, though, that you are going to be okay, just as this fool actually ends up being okay. Opening, open your life and have faith that you can create what you want. It may well be the desire to want to break free from the usual routine of life and look upon life, though, as the fool does, and be empty once again, as if a child. There's very much a manifesting creativity towards here, a move towards wholeness, reowning your courage, and perhaps even an attention to the spiritual journey, and the courage to be who you are without, without any fear at all. You are ready now for a new beginning, perhaps even a quantum leap. Give in, dare to leap, even if fear attempts to hold you back. Trust the voice from within your heart. What is fear for you? How do you imagine the courageous leap into the new? What does it look like? Where does your heart call you to go? And say to yourself during this time, I now follow my heart. I am open and ready to go wherever it may lead me. I am a radiant being. I am a living treasure. I honor and value the unlimited resource of courage which is in me. I respect the nature of who I am 
and there is nothing to fear. Yeah, that fool energy is just sensational for you, I think. Now let's have a look at this card here, which is the Seven of Staves. Well, who are you? Who is this Seven of Staves? There's a woman there. Well, what might I call you? I might call you the Queen of Staves. That's who you can be. The Queen of Staves hovers above the surface of the sea from which grow the Seven Staves. Most as though they are living trees that, once planted, may bear fruit on their own, and they are anchored to the earth beneath the water. Her eyes are shut. She wears a headdress, as though she had received recognition from the world of her status as queen, I suppose, and she is curled in a fetal attitude of prayer. She has, in a sense, retreated from the world. She is in the infant posture, isn't she, of sleep, and her eyes are closed. But she is, in fact, the spirit of a larger movement, I think. The staves she has planted are growing upwards. She has become a leader, herself a source of inspiration, spreading to affect a family, a community, a city, or a whole world. Now, there's an interesting astrology for me associated with this card in this position where it is here, and, and it is Mars in the third decan of, of Leo. The other interesting thing here is that the number seven for me has a mystical association with the feminine planet of Venus, which is uh, beauty, sensitivity, healing, and those sorts of things here. But Mars ruling well, ruling Leo, the third decan of Leo, yeah, the 13th to the 22nd of August, it would be. This is the Lord of Valor, as I call it. And what happens with the number seven here is that the, the energy of the suit of wands, the five, one were to imagine the ace up here, this far down, the energy starts to weaken. And, um, and the feminine energy of Venus associated with the number seven further dilutes the strength of fire in the suit of wands. Now Mars and Leo, well Mars normally gets on very well with Leo, but in this case, as I say, being so low down on the tree, harmony does not exist. And also the feminine energy of Venus doesn't sit very well with Mars, and it may well be that you feel in relation to some matters at the moment, although they're dissipating, that your Mars energy is pretty much all that is keeping you going, although it feels like you are fighting a losing battle. Do you know, I call this the Lord of Valor, and this is talking to you at the moment of you having courage and daring, taking risks and not making any compromises. It's also about you pushing through obstacles. The male warlike power of Mars combined with the daring of the lion in Leo produces incredible force and impact. The fight will be carried out impeccably with you, I think. The valor expressed here is an outgrowth of your personal experience. It has arisen through your ability to learn from past experience. Now, if you apply these lessons, you'll be able to take further risks with greater awareness. Yes, but as I say, I, there is this sense, I think, around you that at one moment you might feel as if you are fighting a losing battle in relation to somebody or something and that it is only your courage that it's keeping you going, or that you're standing on a sinking ship. Maybe you haven't been built the best, dealt the, the best hand here, and even things in the background don't seem to be going well here for you, but I can tell you that, that they are. They are coming together. They are coming together. Now, this can also relate to relationship problems where you're running out of energy and ideas about how to 
keep sustaining the relationship or at work there could be matters going on where you're coming to the end of your tether but you understand that being true to yourself includes standing up for your own truth even in the face of immense resistance trust your power in this present situation you must assert yourself at all costs are you ready to accept all the consequences? Become aware of whatever fears have prevented you until now from asserting yourself. But as the fool says, don't have any fear, conquer fear. Say this to yourself. I express my own reality openly and honestly. So let's have a look at this fellow here who is the he looks like a bit of a madman, doesn't he? Let me have a look at this art. The Prince of Staves. Okay, let's see what you have got to tell me. The here. Well, this Prince of Staves, he does look like a madman. Like all madmen, he is a vessel of creative energy, an agent of chaos, whose value in looking at the world and at his place within it lies in its otherness. While he himself has a tenuous grasp on reality and is not himself able to grasp the truth, he is a source of it for others. He is a pawn in a larger universe and has a treasure of knowledge and esoteric insight buried within him. If only we know how to listen. Now, mad though he may be, he is nevertheless the prince of the chariot of fire. And people of importance to you during this period are going to be, well, I think, Leo and Cancer. Now, these court cards can, of course, represent either gender. Remember that. Now, this, but I'll refer to him as a young man for the obvious reasons. Now, he is a young man who is swift and strong, quite impulsive, I think. He could have a tendency towards violence. It may be violent words, violent thoughts, because he's nevertheless just, noble, and generous with a sense of humour. Now, there is this contradiction going on inside of him because as a prince, esoterically, he is air and in the suit of staves here, it's fire. Well, when you mix air and fire, what you get, you get a firestorm. You get, they get on very well with each other. So this is a dynamic energy here with a strong Leo influence around here. And... Um, air and fire together, they're complementary and active. And so with the heart of a lion, he stands for honesty and integrity and what he believes to be for the common good. There's also a strong sense of morality to his character. Do you know, for you, I think this represents a turning point when things have been going badly. You have to use his energy, that fire energy aided by the, the bursts of wind and air. You have to use that energy to dry and drive, to move on to better things. And now is the right time to do it. You must wear the same confidence that he has. He reminds you to re-engage in life and tackle any challenges that come your way. He also tells you have a lust for life. And he, of course, himself is very courageous and very loyal. The Prince of Staves here is a fascinating expression of youthful, bubbling over energy and joy of life. His thoughts are daring and filled with creative power. His trust in his perception frees him, allowing him to move beyond former limitations in thought and action. Uh, this prince is perfectly ready to engage himself fully in facing life's tests and challenges, but his greatest lesson is that his strong will can only help him towards his goal when it is in harmony with the will of the whole. 
Understand that now you have all you need. Don't let yourself be contained. Don't let yourself be slowed down. Life is prepared to receive you. Trust your boundless creative potential. What challenges are present now in your life? Spread your arms wide and breathe deeply into your heart. He's romantic, so romance could well be around you, I think. And he has a great capacity for hard work. His endurance is indefatigable. And he always wins in the very long run. Now, sometimes it may seem to him that he's fighting against the odds, but his courage is fantastically strong. And he's proud and he detests pettiness. Sometimes he can be slow to make up his mind on any subject, and he always explores every side of every question, I think. He's essentially just, but always feels that justice is not to be obtained in the world. But you should say this to yourself. I love life, and life loves me. Well, what do we have underneath him? We have this card called the Priest. And what do you say, priest? Well, he's organized religion, he is instruction, he is cultural mores, traditions, social norms, all those directive types of information that human civilization seems to generate so abundantly and which lies in wait for every individual who is born into the world. He is a statue holding a scythe He's more of a death-like image even than death itself, I suppose. Civilization aims to survive, and by holding the spectre of death over every individual life, it seeks to uphold itself and its principles designed to save itself and its constituents from destruction. Now, I suppose that blindfolded, the priest cannot see into either the past or into the future, because he rewrites history as fast as it happens. He is a storyteller, fitting into his grand narrative every experience of human life, cataloguing every lesson and every fatal mistake as a warning to present and future generations. As a statue, he is eternal and yet not eternal. He will crumble into the soil beneath the grass and be consumed with the rest of the ruins of civilization after the fall of humanity. And this little girl down here, that might be the priestess when she was a little girl, holding a flower from the tree of life. The consciousness of the self remains forever. Now, I think what this does for you is it says that it indicates a need probably for you at the moment, just at the moment, to follow rules, regulations and the traditions in your life. You may not believe the traditions, but go along with it. it helps, you know, people feel comfortable. It's a period perhaps of intense learning and education. I have to say also that there's a degree of, um, you may hear of marriages around here, you, you may find um, interesting groups at this time, large institutions, learning, seeking. I think you may find that you become a counsellor to somebody or that you seek counsel to someone. I think what uh, you're also doing is that are oh, there some problems in the workplace which are stopping you from reaching your potential? Is that something that's going on there? This is about highest transformation. You are going to be gifted at imparting information and inspiring others. You could have a commitment to the concept of community. And you'll be very good at listening and speaking. And you want to make your ideas tangible and usable. And definitely a deep desire to be challenged by new experiences. The search for the self leads you perhaps into the spiritual realms. This can sometimes 
be a signpost to you meeting a spiritual teacher. So be open to it anyway. Involve yourself with the teachings of spiritual masters. Check them out on the internet. But say this to yourself. I honor the sacred within me. I am inspired by learning and teaching. I am creative and productive in my family and professional life. But there is only one voice that is worth listening to, the voice of my own heart. And then that brings us finally to, it is finally, isn't it? Let's have a look. It's finally to, yeah, well, this is a lady with plenty of experience, isn't it? That's her character here. I think she's got to the stage where she doesn't really care what anybody thinks about her. I think she has a view on things and that is that and people can like it or lump it. She is the queen of the thrones of flame. Aries and Pisces are going to be important to you because I think Pisces, I'm getting Pisces around here because I think Pisces gives her sensitivity and inspiration, which you will have during this period. And Aries, this gives her and you leadership ability and self-confidence. Now she and you will be adaptable, have persistent energy, a calm authority. Look, I have to tell you, you're going to have great powers of attraction. People are going to find you very attractive during this period. So do with that what you will. I'm sure you will manage something. Now she can be generous, but intolerant, I think, and impatient with opposition. Now, as a queen, she is water and she's in the suit of fire. Now, water and fire don't mix, so she has a lot of contradiction in her. Now, she has an immense capacity for friendship and love, but at her initiative, in some respects, there is a self-complacent vanity, even a snobbery about her. Now, she can brood, come to a wrong decision as a result, and react with savagery. Let's pull you out here. If you're going to be savage, I don't want you attacking my friend here. Uh, she can also be quick to take offense and harbor revenge without good cause. Really? Yeah. I think she can also have fits of the blues, which she can try to overcome with the booze or with panic-stricken outbursts of ill-considered fury. You have worked on yourself and made progress. It's time to learn how to share this with others. Say to yourself, I am a radiant being filled with life and love. Well, that's it for you this month. Gee, I'm a bit exhausted after that. I don't know how you feel. That was great. I really, uh, it's kind of draining though, isn't it, this, uh, this business? I really enjoyed doing that for you, and I'm glad that you were uh, able to um, participate along with me. It's been great uh, to do it with you, and I'm looking forward to more in the future. But until that time, remember this and remember one thing only, and it is that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Until then, it's bye for now. <laughs>